a global pandemic is on its way. There's just no other way to say it. They're hiding this, probably in some vain attempt to stop a panic. And I'll say right up front that panicking or going crazy about this isn't going to solve anything, but knowledge is power. And you need to know that the World Health Organization has already admitted it's out of their hands. The CDC has admitted that they can't even begin to identify where the epicenter is, how fast it's spreading, and where it's going to turn up next. They know that it's going to get reported eventually, so they're already starting to try to do some damage control. But more than likely, it's going to end up here because of the amount of troops that we have had in Africa over the last two years. We had four of them killed in an ambush right down the road from where this is going on right now. This uh, area in the Congo that has seen thousands dead and tens of thousands more becoming infected despite this vaccine that they have that they developed from the last um, outbreak. But without any further delay, I would like to share with you the information that you need to have. Now, this is from National Geographic, 19 April. That's two days ago. I'm just going to read through this, and I'm going to kind of gloss over some of the less important parts and show you what they're really saying. An Ebola epidemic thundering through heavily populated provinces in the Northeastern Democratic Republic of the Congo has sickened more than 110 people in the past week. Not that big of a deal right off the bat. Despite the efforts of specialist medical teams and effective vaccine and new treatments that are being tested in the region, the outbreak is already the second largest on record behind the epidemic that burned through West Africa from 2014 to 2016, killing more than 11,300 people. The WHO has reported 1,290 cases of Ebola virus disease in the recent outbreak and as many as 833 deaths in the North Kivu, a province bordering Rwanda and Uganda in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. In its most extreme form, the viral hemorrhagic fever leads to uncontrollable bleeding and death. Now, that's the basics. Now, here's the important part. In this outbreak, the virus appears to be infecting an unusually high number of children and killing a large percentage of people before they've sought or received treatment in Ebola centers staffed by local international aid workers. Now, teams trying to track the spread of the disease are finding fresh cases with no obvious connection to previous previous patients. Let me say that again. Teams trying to track the spread of the disease are finding fresh cases with no obvious connection to previous patients, leading some health specialists to worry that the end of this epidemic is nowhere in sight. This also means they don't know where it started. That means it's showing up places where it couldn't possibly have been as a result of what they call their epicenter. Now, here's the part where they talk about efforts to contain the virus being hindered by where the outbreak is going through this war-torn region. But a quote from Lawrence Gostin of Georgetown University reads as thus, I'm not at all optimistic that the epidemic will be brought under control in the near to medium term. All the data point in the direction of an extended epidemic. With ongoing community distrust and explosive violence and no concrete plan to overcome these obstacles, cases will increase with potential regional or global transmission. Cases will increase with potential regional or global transmission. Any delay in treatment makes the virus more dangerous by giving it more chances to kill and spread says Natalie Roberts. She works for Doctors Without Borders. You have a window of time in which treatment is effective. Wait too long, the patient dies anyway, and people lose confidence in treatment. Now, remember the video that I did yesterday and one from before? This virus can lie dormant in places in the body that have what they call immune privilege. Privilege. It's like the eyeball. There are parts of the body that aren't directly connected to the bloodstream so that you can't test for it. 
Anyway, I'll quote this again. You have a window of time in which treatment is effective. Wait too long, the patient dies anyway, and people lose confidence in treatment. Like any disease, the more severe it gets, the less likely any treatment is going to have an impact. That means, like rabies, once symptoms start to manifest, it's too late. They won't be able to, to deal with it. And most hospitals in North America have the ability to deal with 9, maybe 10 Ebola patients at a time. Meaning because they have to quarantine them, each specifically. If this gets into the hundreds, it's over. Just the hundreds. All right, the first embers of this outbreak began to smolder last summer when cases started appearing in northeast Congo. This is the tenth time Ebola has emerged in the country. And as before, the virus crept out of a still unidentified natural reservoir, hmm, named after a river in Congo where it first appeared in 1976. The virus under a microscope resembles a kink strain of spaghetti, works its way into cells, of course reproduces, and destroys the connections between tissues, causing organ failure and leaky blood vessels, and it dismantles the body from the inside out. But here's where things, they're trying to put a face on this, but they admit later on that everything they just said is only theoretical. But transmitting Ebola is not exactly simple. The virus travels between humans through infected bodily fluids and tissues, but infiltrating a second host requires going in through broken skin or a mucous membrane, such as the eyes or nose. Okay, let's assume that to be fact. Quote, Ebola is not the most infectious disease in the world. It's a very lethal disease and a high mortality rate, but it's not that infectious. Yet, during the past nine months, those first embers have ignited a viral fire. Because of the outbreak, the DRC, uh, the Congo, delayed a presidential election. Um, efforts to contain the epidemic have been stymied by local reluctance. Um, they've increased their presence down there. And they've, they're trying to, in these three paragraphs, you know, say that, you know, we're really getting ahead of this thing. But when you get down to vaccine shows promise in this article, here's where everything, it goes off the rails. Health workers aren't fighting this epi epidemic empty-handed. They talk about this powerful new vaccine developed by Canadian scientists and tested in the Guinea in 2015. It's made of an animal virus engineered to wear a non-lethal Ebola virus protein, which provokes the human immune system into mounting a preemptive defense. So they're pretty much admitting here that the vaccine contains the virus. Still officially unlicensed by the U.S. FDA, the vaccine is being donated by its manufacturer, Merck. Oh, well, if it's Merck, then I guess we should probably not worry at all. As of April 16, 102,000 people have been vaccinated. Most of these who are primary or secondary contacts of Ebola patients. But remember, earlier they said they are finding Ebola cases in areas where they have no connection to current patients. So their idea here that they're saying is they're trying to create a ring of vaccinated individuals around people that they already know are infected. And then they're creating a secondary ring. You're not necessarily protecting the contacts because they might have already contracted Ebola by the time you've confirmed the case. But if you then vaccinate their contacts, you should, should be able to prevent them from getting Ebola and therefore stop the epidemic. Their wording here is very important because they're talking about theoretical, not proven. The WHO reports that this vaccine is, quote-unquote, proving highly effective especially when administered early enough. No deaths have been reported among people who developed Ebola symptoms more than 10 days post-vaccination. However, so with an extremely effective vaccine in hand and more supplies on the way, why is the epidemic still out of control? Quote, the strategy looks fine on paper, and theoretically we understand why it should work, but in practice we're just questioning how feasible it is, Roberts says, we do have a good vaccine, but it's not managing to control the epidemic. We have a good vaccine, but it's not managing to control the epidemic. The only way that this works is if everybody stays in one place. And that's what the rest of this talks about here. 
that if you talk if this gets into a mobile population, it's over. No vaccine's gonna work here. Next article. This is from PBS. More than eleven hundred people have died from Ebola in the DRC, and we this a lot of this we already know. But this is just another person that's going that's coming out and saying that this is beyond our ability to deal with. We talked about this before, Director General Tedros Adhanom, it's Ghebreyesus, I guess, warned the risk that the Ebola virus could spread to other countries. The risk of it was very high. The Director General of the CDC, of the, I'm sorry, the WHO, says that the risk of Ebola going to other countries is very high. There's also this guy named David Miliband, president and CEO of the International Rescue Committee, who's just been there on the ground. He says, yes, I think it's very important that people understand that although this is already the second biggest Ebola outbreak in history, and it's the first Ebola outbreak to take place in a conflict zone, the real situation on the ground is far more troubling. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit better. It's not that just the number of cases are probably much higher. It's that the level of violence, including violence directed against health centers, three IRC Rescue Community Health Centers have been targeted and have been. That means that there is a real danger of the disease spreading, of the number of cases spiking, and the kind of upsurge in death rates that we have seen in previous outbreaks. The great danger at the moment is that the number of cases is already rising but not being recorded. Every time you find someone with Ebola, you need to make sure that the 10, 20 people that they might have come in contact with with are taking the necessary precautions. They can't do this. This is the problem. And as it gets into areas that are more prone to travel, people with, you know, more access to travel, these areas are populated by people that don't really travel very far, but it's going, it's spreading like wildfire and they can't track it, they can't track it, they can't trace it, and they can't treat it. So this is how it's going to start. And I guess since we're we are twelve minutes in at this point, this is another article. This is from uh, Stat News. This is an article from Science News talking about how it lingers in survivors' eyeballs. But this is the article I wanted to get to. See, as a result of everything falling apart in the Middle East, we're now going to send Americans into this. And this is from Fox. Six thousand troops headed to Africa. This is why you need to know about this. It gets here and it's over. They can't, this is the part about this that they're not getting. If they can't use the vaccine to contain it, and it continues to spread, and by the time people know they have it, it's too late. There's going to be nothing that's going to work here. It's going to spread like the flu. And with only a limited amount of people available to treat it, and you take on top of the fact that here in our country, people can get in car and drive 100, 200, 500 miles. You know, every day this happens. Millions of people do this every day. It's a, you know, The spread of this is not going to be contained. And this is why this probably is the most important story out there that's not being reported. They're going to try to put a face on this, but it's not going to uh, fix anything. So as far as advice to deal with this, I have no idea. I'll be very honest with you, I have no idea. I guess you could hide, you know, you could 
not have contact with anybody, but, you know, the less contact, the better. That's about all I can say at this point. I'll continue to do some research on this, but I'm sure there's people out there a lot more well-schooled in the prevention of the transmission of this than I am. But just know that it's coming. It's uh, not a matter of if it's coming. It's a matter of when it's coming. So I guess we'll leave that there. Like, share, subscribe. Definitely share this so that maybe we can do something to mitigate it.